The best way to explain it. Episode 19. back ladies and gentlemen podcast listeners to another episode of the best way to explain it the podcast that's almost as popular as that other vanilla ice song (laughs) i i wish i knew another vanilla ice song to uh say oh yeah that one but yeah i know it no yeah that's that's about where we're at though you know you know, you know what's sad is whenever that comes on and then whenever um, the Queen song that he stole the beat from comes on, I mm-hmm. I can never tell which one's going to start until someone starts singing. So I half yeah. want to sing Under Pressure and I half want to sing Ice Ice Baby at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. The, the troubles I, I have feel to that live way. with. Well, you... Magnificent man. <laughs> well, when I'm uh, when I'm walking around the streets in my ice blue uh, jumpsuit, sometimes I just have to break out in song. Well, I I understand that. Yeah, on a daily basis. <laughs> yeah. Well, dude, it's good to have you dude, back. Yeah, How are you feeling? I'm, I'm alive. That's for sure. Yeah, I, I'm fully recovered now, but it was a rough yeah. couple of days there. Can you describe in like intimate detail what was going on? <laughs> I had a diabetic ketoacidosis, so I got to spend oh, okay. some time in the hospital. Uh, you could listen to the episode about insulin if you wanted to learn a little bit about it, but basically what happened- Episode yeah, two. What happened was uh, I am bad at taking care of my diabetes. Well, mm-hmm. I have been lately, and uh, right. my blood sugar spiked up and some- other things happen like i was super Uh, dehydrated from traveling i was down in kansas city and mm. yeah i uh wound up in the hospital but you're all right now. i am all right now i'm back podcasting that's good to know yeah tell you what it's tough to just be the only one talking like i was my voice was going at the end i was i was listening to uh just doing my sound and stuff and uh i could tell my voice was really going there at the end yeah yeah Nice to have you take the <laughs> it's, some of the pressure. It's good to be back. It's it's good yeah. to be back. All right. Well, we have some cool news to announce. So we've been doing this giveaway for the past month, and we are going to announce the winner. So the winner of the Amazon Echo, which he got by, oh, we just gave it away. It's a he, but uh, he got it by rating and reviewing our show, which you can still do, and we'd still greatly appreciate it. Um, But the winner of the Amazon Echo is Chris Gunderson. So congratulations, Chris. We will will send that to you as soon as we get your address. Congrats, buddy. So, so, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not, it wasn't favoritism. It was Brecken's former roommate. It was pure blind luck that it happened to be a guy we knew. Well, I threw it in a randomizer and it. Well, it was like a it was a good chance it'd be somebody we knew. <laughs> <laughs> two two out of three or two out of three out of four. <laughs> yeah, right. Right? Maybe uh, four out yeah. of four. We don't know. But yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Oh uh, well. So congrats, man. Um we'll get that to you when we get it to you. So cool. So appreciate everybody who participated and we'll probably do some stuff some more fun stuff in the future, but for now, Brecken is going to explain concussions. Oh, I forgot what I was going to explain. Sorry. Too many hits to the yeah, head. Yeah, concussions. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Hey. So, so I mean, I just kind of introduced the topic of uh, what happens with a concussion. But if you guys remember a while back, a movie came out about uh, concussions. It was called Concussion, very originally t- titled. But it was also yeah. about the uh, doctor who discovered CTE, and I thought it was really interesting. It kind of goes along with the injuries episode that I did a couple episodes ago, um, and uh, the it was sixteen. Yeah, yeah. So although Will Smith performed excellently in the movie, it really missed the point. So I'm not just going to direct you toward like that movie to learn what a concussion is. Obviously, we're doing a whole episode about it. Uh, Tell the truth. <laughs> that's, that's all I know from yeah. the movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the uh the popularity of the concussion has uh become like 
huge lately with all of these uh, NFL players who have either committed suicide or been injured or killed other people because of uh, this stuff called CTE. So I thought it was important to talk about it, and it was a good time, again, with the uh, injuries episode. Uh, they're also really interesting because I played football and you played football too, Scott, but I was a line, That's I correct. was a lineman and we hit heads almost every play. So that was, a, mm-hmm. a. it's really scary to read about this stuff. I was talking with my brother who also played football and he like, I was, we were watching the movie together and he and I were both like, maybe I have CTE, stuff like yeah. that. But I don't, yeah. I didn't really get hit in the head much. I was just, well, it's like when you're always running past everybody and you're so much faster and better than everyone. It's <laughs> tough to get hit in the head. All right, yeah. yeah. And, uh, back in the real world. Um, <laughs> Hey, <laughs> uh, wait, so when did you say you watched this movie? Uh, just this weekend, actually. It was my first okay. time watching it too. So part of your research. Yeah, sure. There you go. I, I was just <laughs> chilling on the couch and it was on and I was like, Hey, I'm supposed to do a podcast about that. Maybe I should watch the movie. Nice. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, tell so me. Let's move into our actual discussion. Uh, a a concussion is a traumatic brain injury. It typically is caused by a blow to the head, uh, but it's also caused by violent shaking of the head and upper body. So during this impact or the shaking of the brain, it's beaten against the skull and bruised. Sometimes nerves can tear. Uh, it it's also. Um, when it shakes like this, uh, because of the consistency of the brain, it's kind of that jelly like thing. It can move at different speeds, kind of like ballistics gel, uh, moves in waves when you hit it or shoot it or like a punching bag, Mm -hmm. you'll see it in slow motion, those waves that go through it. So think about that going through your brain and that wave is going to tear apart nerve tissue and, uh, cause a lot of damage within the brain. So when these nerve fibers are, uh, torn, severely there is no chance for uh recovery of these nerve fibers but less severe tearing can be recovered from they can uh like link back together um symptoms of this concussion or these concussions include uh headaches dizziness fatigue impaired focus and an increased sensitivity to light and sound You'll see a lot of guys, they'll they'll get hit on the football field and they'll walk around really dizzy like they just got home from the bar at 2 a.m. Uh, but symptoms yep. of an actual concussion usually clear up within a few weeks. Uh, in a small proportion of individuals, uh, it can last a lot longer It uh, and can be responsible for prolonged changes in cognitive function. So if you see... Um, I mean, I'll talk about CTE later, but guys with CTE, they'll be very angry and their mood swings will change. And some people with, that have sustained a couple concussions can have the same mood swings, even if they don't have mm-hmm. a CTE. So, uh, while rare, a second concussion before the brain has had a chance to recover can cause a life threatening brain swelling. And then repeated concussions could cause progressive, progressive cognitive decline. So what happens with this is concussions compound their effects. So if you have one concussion, uh, and then you get another after the, you know, waiting period of whenever this concussion subsides, uh, it doesn't just damage the brain equally. It like, let's say on a magnitude of 10, it damages it 10 times more the second time you, uh, damage or you get your concussion. So yeah. Um, (sighs) <sighs> so that's why they're really cautious about sending people out yeah back on the field yeah like, if they're afraid they have a concussion yeah if, well, if, if there's yeah if there's a lot of serious concern about the player um they won't even touch the field because they're worried that this guy could either die or could have some serious issues uh with his brain so Uh, Sometimes concussions don't have immediate effects. Uh, A lot of these are called sub-concussive blows or mini-concussions, which really aren't concussions at all uh, in terms of, like, an actual medical concussion that you are diagnosed with. What happens is 
uh, for example, linemen in football, they'll hit heads almost every play. Well, your brain will hit the side of your head, but you won't feel any concussion effects or anything. You won't be dizzy, but you'll have a, a small concussion within your brain as far as like nerve damage in whatever part of your brain hit the skull. So mm-hmm. this is where CTE comes in. That's why these are extremely dangerous. Uh, subconcussive blows are thought to be the main cause of CTE. So I've used these uh, initials a lot in this podcast already uh cte is described as chronic traumatic encephalopathy it's a lot of fun to say i think it's encephalopathy Encephalopathy. there you go sure yeah Yeah. that sounds right that sounds that sounds more like the movie uh Mm. and it's a degenerative brain disease found particularly in athletes, military veterans, and other people with a history of repetitive brain trauma. Uh, CTE is, um, or is when a protein called tau forms clumps that slowly spread throughout the brain, killing brain cells. And then, uh, it's, it's been seen in people as young as 17, but symptoms do not generally begin appearing until years after the onset of head impacts. Um, and that's what you see in the, the movie is those little black spots on the uh, microscope clips. Right. Uh, those are, the, those are the what? little, or whatever they're called, the, the slides. MRI? Machines? No, not not the MRI Thingies, machines. No? They they actually slice up people's brains and then they look at them under a microscope. Uh, uh, yeah, the slides? slides. Yeah, couldn't think of the word. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm here yeah. for. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, bro. I didn't have that last week. <laughs> I'm so You're sorry. I, I I've been getting good with the transitions too. But yeah. Well, continue. <laughs> uh. So with CTE, early symptoms will show in the late 20s to 30s, and they'll start affecting a patient's mood and behavior. So you'll see those those anger control problems, some impulse control problems, uh, aggression, depression, and paranoia. Uh, You'll see that a lot with uh, Strajacek in the movie, the guy who plays him. He gets really angry, and he's scared and stuff like that. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to relate a lot of this to the movie because I just recently saw it, so it's fresh in my head. No, that's fair. Yeah. So I've never seen yeah. it. it. It's actually really good. It's not, like I said, mm-hmm. it's not very good at like medical information about what CTE or concussions are, though. Yeah, but I feel like anybody who tried to put all that information into some form of digestible media would just get laughed at. You know? <laughs> and that's why we're putting it in indigestible media. Hey. <laughs> so as as CTE progresses, uh some may experience problems with uh thinking and memory, including memory loss, uh confusion, impaired judgment, and eventually progressive dementia. Uh cognitive symptoms tend to appear later than mood and behavioral symptoms. So you'll see the twenty to thirty year old guy getting angry, having impulse control, but really the memory and like the stuff that really f- seems like a brain problem won't show up until the uh, person's 40s and 50s. Uh, Patients may exhibit one or both symptom clusters within the uh, CTE, so like the impaired thinking or the just mood swings and paranoia and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, A little bit of history about it. Uh, it was first discovered in 1928 when Dr. Harrison Martland described a group of boxers as having punch drunk syndrome. Uh, over the next 75 years, several researchers reported similar findings in boxers and brain trauma patients. Unfortunately, uh, fewer than 50 cases were confirmed, though. And now we're going to get into what the movie uh, Concussion is about. Uh, in 2005, a pathologist named Bennett Omalu published the first evidence of CTE in an American football player, uh, Mike Webster. He's the first guy in the movie uh, who's living in his truck and acting completely insane. He tasers himself, and I believe that's how he dies. Seems like a, a weird way to do it, but I'm not going to judge. 
<laughs> well, it sounds like he's nuts, you yeah. know, given these symptoms. I, uh, and I'm not going to spend much time on that story. I've already said, go watch the movie if, if you want to hear about how that story plays out and everything and what the NFL has done. I'll touch on the NFL in, in a hot second. Uh, what's scary is that we, uh, regular concussions aren't often the underlying cause. So you'll have guys that have like one or two concussions in their life. And those guys may have some symptoms of CTE, but rather guys who may not have ever sustained a concussion uh, and have these subconcussive impacts on each play. Those are the people who are really developing this CTE and they're going insane because of it. <clears throat> so, okay. yeah. I have a question. Yeah. So, uh, the so you talk about all these different like symptoms or, or problems that CTE has. So is that due to the tearing of the brain? So like it kind of so these symptoms do they show up kind of depending on where your brain's getting hit? So like if your brain gets hit in like the short term memory area and starts getting tears there, you start then you therefore experience yeah. short term memory, or is it just kind of yeah that's cumulative? Yeah, that's pretty much how most brain damage works. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, like a lot of guys are going to be getting hit in the frontal lobe. So that's going to cause a lot of impulse control to go away because they're like spearing people with their heads and stuff. So, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Does that, well, not cool. Yeah. Does that fully answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. All right. So like if you were to hit somebody on a certain part of the head. Yeah. Theoretically. So if you're like, Hey teacher, I got my homework done. I turned it into turned it into you yesterday, and they're like, "No, you didn't." And you'd be like, "Well, I also you also hit yourself on the head in this particular spot, and you just can't remember it because <laughs> you have CTE there." <laughs> well, that you, would be a valid excuse. Yeah, you can try and give your teacher a concussion to help them forget that you forgot to turn in your homework, but mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to work out or not. Now, I don't know. Maybe I'll try. No, just kidding. <laughs> don't condone that. So, the uh, the NFL gets brought up a lot with concussions. Obviously, I've talked a lot about football too, and uh, with the recent findings about CTE and everything, I did some research into what sport had the most. Uh, and it's overwhelmingly the NFL, possibly because there's just such a a huge like viewership of the NFL that the number of cases matter more or because there's a lot of players on the field at the same time, like a, one mm-hmm. boxer getting punch drunk is pretty obvious because they're getting hit in the head all the time. But when you've got, you know, 32 NFL teams with you know, 53 man rosters plus practice squads, you're going to have a lot more confirmed cases. Um, but overwhelmingly the NFL has the most, uh, confirmed cases of CTE, uh, within the sport. And I've, I've discussed a lot of actual facts and I'm going to talk about some of the stuff that the NFL has said to go along with CTE, because you hear a lot about how the NFL has, uh, covered up the, the CTE and stuff. And they have, uh, they tried to keep it as quiet as possible. Uh, which is really scary to think about. Um, Mm -hmm. So the NFL went through insulting links, as I said, and to disprove any notion that CTE is a major problem for football players, uh, this was then reversed with certain deaths related to CTE, including player suicides. A study conducted by Boston University researchers, researchers conducted on 111 former NFL players' brains found evidence of CTE in 110 samples, uh, which I'll get into the NFL statement on it. And the NFL statement kind of makes sense, but it's an alarming amount of brains that have CTE. Mm -hmm. Um, So the research that Boston University did was the largest to date, and according to the NFL's response, it doesn't confirm that the condition is common in all football players because of the possible bias in the brain stored in the Boston Brain Bank, which makes sense. Uh, The 
Boston Brain Bank supplies to Boston University, which does a lot of CTE studies. So if a brain possibly has CTE, it may be stored in the Boston Brain Bank and thus give them that kind of confirmation oh, right, bias. Right. Obviously, if, yeah. if they need brains for to study CTE, they need brains that yep. have it. And yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. So, so it's not necessarily saying that all NFL players are going to have CTE and it's going to be a huge epidemic, but, uh, I'm, well, <coughs> excuse me, man, See? You're, you're rusty. Yeah, I am rusty. Well, really my, my throat's been dry. I was so dehydrated that, you know, yeah, yeah. but, uh, here's the NFL's full statement on, on the whole research. So. The NFL statement goes like, we appreciate the work done by Dr. McGee and her colleagues for the value it adds in the ongoing quest for a better understanding of CTE. Case studies such as those compiled in this updated paper are important to further advancing the science and progress related to head trauma. The medical and scientific communities will benefit from this publication and the NFL will continue to work with a wide range of experts to improve the health of current and former NFL athletes. As noted by the authors, there are still many unanswered questions relating to the cause, incidents, and prevalence of long-term effects of head trauma such as CTE. The NFL is committed to supporting scientific research in into CTE and advancing progress in the prevention and treatment of head injuries. So I want to highlight uh, one particular thing that they said in here. As noted by the authors, there are still many unanswered questions relating to the cause, incidence, and prevalence of long-term effects of head trauma such as CTE. I think it's pretty locked down that it has to do with getting your head hit. Yeah. <laughs> and there, well, yeah. It just feels intuitive, yeah. you know. You see these players just getting destroyed in the head, and you, like, nobody thinks to themselves, "Yeah, that's probably yeah, fine." That, that's completely healthy. Like, no one sees someone banging their head against a right. locker in a football locker right. room, which I know happens, uh, and thinks, "Oh, yeah, that guy's gonna have a healthy brain." Like, right. just just well, admit to it, NFL, and be like, "Yeah, we're gonna try and yeah. do something." Right? Well, they're just scared that. Uh, like parents aren't going to let their kids yeah, play yeah. football um and then you know they'll lose out on a lot of talent yeah but i think i don't know like they just need to be honest about what they know and say here's the risks that you assume when playing football and like most of the guys that play today they know that it's not good for them long term they've taken years off their life playing yeah. but they just love playing yeah. and, and and it, so, it i i like to kind of go that cheesy route of like I think it made me who I am today to play like I'm not saying it was completely healthy for me like there were days where I was super sick and still had to play football and stuff but you know the CTE made you <laughs> yeah the CTE that. made me who I, no football <laughs> <laughs> I would not be who I am without this brain damage <laughs> I, I would not be who I am but then again I don't know who I am so <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh man, good. good thing uh, people with brain damage will forget that this episode happened. So, indeed, <laughs> uh, and they'll listen to, twice. To go along with this, though, I'm I'm not gonna rip into the NFL because they are doing uh, a lot to support neuroscience research and stuff. In fact, they also stated along with that statement that I repeated uh, that in 2016 the NFL pledged 100 million dollars in support for independent medical research and in engineering advancements in neuroscience related topics. Seems kind of vague, but again, yeah. uh, this is in addition to the $100 million that the NFL and its partners are already spending on medical and neuroscience research. So with the NFL acknowledging the, these issues, it, it gives the NFL a little bit of space to say, hey, we're working on it, uh, and it, but it still provides this landscape where CTE will be developed by players. Um, I'm not against the NFL at all. I mean, I've been watching it all day today. Uh, it's Sunday, by the way. So yeah, <laughs> yeah I've been watching that red zone. Uh, I'm watching it right now. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> no hey, joke. I seriously considered throwing it up. In the background. Hey, me too. No. <laughs> so, uh, and and letting them acknowledge it and everything is is one thing, but the fact that the NFL has been dragging their feet for so long and knowing that this could impact people's brains and lives outside of football for so long, 
they they should have done something sooner, in my opinion. Yeah. And well, they shouldn't have covered yeah, it up. Yeah, definitely. So that was the thing. So to go along with this, I have a, a little bit of like an opinion piece at the end. So if you just wanted to learn a, a little bit about concussions and everything, you can leave it off here because uh, I'm going to go into something a little bit radical. But uh, sometimes I joke about us going back to the the days of the leather helmets. And mm-hmm. uh, my meaning behind this joke is is that we have such large pads on these players they no longer fear the injury through contact so when you have like a big fluffy pillow do you run into a wall a little bit harder i i just that was a it, it's a analogy. weird it's a weird thing i don't like, run into walls i i tend to not like when you when you prioritize have doing that padding like, I know what you mean. You, you feel invincible. You feel a little bit more invincible. Like if you had a right. bulletproof vest, you might take a little bit more of a risky move right. in an operation because you feel like you might you won't die or something like that. Mm-hmm. So so that's right. what I want to get into. Well, is. or like um, if you go to one of those indoor gymnastics places, yeah. like yeah. you're running and jumping and doing all sorts of stuff that I would not even dare do. Um, if it weren't for all those pads and like trampolines, yeah, around. yeah, and in fact, I'll I'll get into that too because uh, the padding used in gymnastics is uh, one of those th- like supporting evidence for my idea. So I I, okay. I didn't really research this part. I've done a little bit of research on other things that are related to this. Uh, this is mostly opinion, but. I was I was looking into those sports that had a lot of concussions, and I like to compare and con- contrast rugby and football because they seem like similar guys, you know, like big tough dudes. Mm-hmm. And rugby players are just massive, you know, right. athletes and stuff. Uh, they had a reduced amount of CTE again, maybe because there are less rugby players in the world or something. But uh, there hasn't been as many confirmed cases of CTE with rugby players who don't wear pads on their heads compared to football players who have the giant plastic helmets and plastic pads. So think about when you run with shoes on versus when you run without them. Uh, When you run with shoes on, especially running shoes with the big cushion, you tend to land on your heel and then roll forward. Unless you've been taught a good technique and you maintain it, uh, you'll land on your heel and then roll forward, push off your the balls of your feet, and repeat. Whereas if you run with shoes off, you run on the balls of your feet and you land on the balls of your feet each time. And that's that's actual proper running form because that puts the forces within your uh, muscles instead of within your shin bones, and that's how that's how stress fractures are caused if you land on your oh. heels. Yeah, does that make I sense? I honestly didn't know that. So so your mindset. I don't run. So. <laughs> uh, your mindset changes with the padding, even if it's not a, a purposeful like change in your mindset right right? so like you said the gymnastics pads so when you see a bunch of like pads or pillows on the floors i remember uh one time my brother and i put a bunch of pillows at the bottom of these stairs at my old house here in grand island nebraska and the uh we would jump off of the stairs and we would like keep climbing up and climbing up until we got to the top of the stairs and we would jump off and on into these giant pillow forts that we made and we would feel invincible well think about that with gymnastics if you see a thicker pad you land harder and studies have shown i i don't know where they are i think it might have been a malcolm gladwell book but basically you if you know that the pad at the end of the jump is thicker or like softer you're gonna land a lot harder to try and make that landing stick versus if the pad's thinner then you're actually going to like use your preserve your your, form and yeah everything so let's apply this theory to football if we thinned out the pads the guys wouldn't hit each other as hard because of injury now we all know the guy that's gonna you know beat his head against the locker with his helmet off uh Mm -hmm. but 
a lot of guys would do it with their helmet on. In fact, I did it a couple times just to get like pumped up for a game, you know? <laughs> so I believe it. So I remember I did it before this podcast. <laughs> I remember not worrying as much when I had a helmet on, uh, going up against another guy and we would hit heads and I would feel fine and I you know, now I'm like, oh, that probably caused some brain damage. Right. Uh but it it happens all the time with these these thick pads that these guys just go head first right into someone, and that's not how you would try and tackle someone if you were, um, if you had a much smaller, thinner helmet that actually inflicted right. pain or something. If you tackled with right. incorrect form, so that's my little opinion piece at the end. But I I think it makes sense to have like a maybe a trial of what thinner pads would look like. Right. Yeah. Well, okay, and here's something that I I think is I really like this idea because it slows them down um, from doing these vicious hits. Yeah. And plus, it's, from the way you described concussions, it's not necessarily the hit on the outer part of their head. It's what happens in the yeah. brain with that force. So it doesn't matter how big a pad you have. Yeah. Yeah, because your brain's still going to I mean, the amount of force is going to be you know, likely more, but at least the same. And so your brain's still going to rock around in your head with the same amount of the uh, same amount of force and therefore do the same amount of damage. Yeah. So it's not about cushioning your head. It's about providing an incentive not to hit your head as hard. Yeah, it's kind of. And so I think that yeah, makes it's sense. It's kind of like uh, momentum. Uh, if you were driving a semi truck with a large rock on the back and the, you tried to slow the semi truck without a properly braced rock, that rock's going to slide forward no matter what. So it Mm -hmm. doesn't matter if you have a mattress on the front of that truck to like stop it from colliding with something. If that, if you slow that down and that rock slides forward, you're, it's still going to hit you in the cab in front of you. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah, we just solved CTE. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's a theory, and I don't know if it'll ever be tried. They're trying so many new technologies to like try to remove the forces from going to the head, but I just right. the way the physics work out, I don't think it's gonna happen. Well, it's yeah. almost like you'd have to do something inside the the head. Yeah, yeah. To really, because it seems like a concussion is inside the yep. head. So I have a question: Why do why do people vomit when they get concussed? Why is that a thing? Um, probably just dizziness. Okay. Um, I know that is a symptom. Uh, the the exact reaction, I, I don't know, but I'm guessing it's like the dizziness and the, the vertigo that you get with the concussion. Right. Okay. Yeah, that probably makes yeah. sense. I don't, yeah, I've never experienced concussion, so I wouldn't know what yeah. it felt like. Yeah. Just because, you know, I'm so good at <laughs> protecting myself. <laughs> it's true. I'm all about that self-preservation, yeah, you know? Yeah, you were just that good of a quarterback. No, I was just really pretty much a coward on the oh, football yeah, field. Yeah, so. that too. Yeah, but it worked, you know? Yeah, good to see it translated into off-field performance too. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's... Nice, yeah, dude. That's that's all I got for you today, so... Nice. That was yeah, good. Man. Um so yeah, that's the end of episode nineteen. Holy cow, we're gonna be at twenty episodes yeah. soon. That is nuts. That is nuts. Well, it's been fun. Um I'm actually recording this at my parents' house because I'm home for a break. And so if the sound is worse or better, I apologize. Well, if it's better, I don't apologize. But <laughs> yes, you you know what I mean. So yeah, so we'll be uh we'll the the holidays do not stop the best way to explain it we will be putting out episodes likely twice a week unless one of us does get sick again i i'm planning another <coughs> uh, sickness the next couple of weeks yeah. so <laughs> yeah so cool well i um yeah congratulations chris yeah. again we'll get that sent off to you and yeah i got nothing else i've got nothing else either All right. See you later, nerds.